Okay, so th I, I find that fantastic. And when it comes to networking, marketing your art, with the knowledge that you have today as such an established artist with a long standing career and many, many shows, gallery representations, which, what advice would you give your younger self that you could just do it better from the beginning with on the marketing side? Mm. Would I would be? have paid a lot more attention and focusing more on the networking aspect and especially to meet the right people. Hi guys, so I'm here in Jersey in a studio of an amazing Swedish artist called Johan Wallström. He has been described as a post-postmodernist artist by Anthony Hayden Guest in an amazing article that was written about him. He also used to be a rock star in Sweden for 18 years, touring all over the world. He is currently represented in galleries in Norway, New York City and Spain. And he has had countless shows all over the world. And he's going to tell you about how to get your art into galleries, how to market yourself as a young artist. And he's going to also tell us a funny story about his political influence in his art. So stay tuned, because this is not something you want to miss. Let's start with uh, your background, where you grew up and um, your background in the music scene. Yeah, I grew up in Stockholm, Sweden. Yeah. Um, at a er very early age, I started to play piano. Oh. And I also started to paint at the same time. And um, because I, my mother was an artist, my grandmother, I'm the fifth generation of artists on my mother's side. Wow, that's and amazing. Then when I was around 20 years old, I had written a bunch of songs and I got offered a record deal. Wow. So I, it was a little bit of conflict for me. Should I go for my painting or should I go for the music? And I decided to give the music a try. Mm -hmm. I originally thought it was going to be like for two years or something like that. but. Mm -hmm. I got stuck there for 18 years since then. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, that's a bit of a touring, difference. Touring, recording, and then um, my band turned out to be a pretty good band. So mm -hmm. other art, other singers asked if we could join them and, as a backup band. So mm -hmm. we, we started to tour with both Scandinavian uh, uh, artists and also American and English artists. At the time, I was uh, a party animal. Um, oh, you you were. Yeah, you sure were, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> like a real rock star. Yeah, not any Johan. longer though. I g <laughs> gave that up okay. because I almost, it almost killed me. But uh, that's another story. So uh, I was like expecting, I don't know, drugs, alcohol, everything backstage with Bowie and his band, right? And it turns out that Bowie and all, all his friends, uh, guys there in the band, at least at that time, they had gone total sober. Yeah. Total clean, wow. healthy lifestyles. So it was only like carrot juice, tomato juice, fruits, so vegetables, <laughs> not even anything unhealthy to eat. Okay, wow. So what? I was like, what? Vegan. <laughs> yeah, it was like. <laughs> so David Byrne went vegan. It was all healthy, all healthy oh, stuff backstage. Amazing. Smart, good, good yeah, for him, you know, yeah. he probably wanted to really focus on yeah. his craft and yeah. providing the best music for his yeah. audience and everything. Yeah. Wow. So then. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, then I got to a point where I decided I don't want to be in the music any longer. Okay. Because I wanted to clean up my act and save my life. Okay. So became... I mean, I still like to go to a good party, but I'd, I don't drink any longer and mm -hmm. I don't do any drugs mm -hmm. now. So, so you, I've, been, I've been clean and sober for many years now. Yeah. And that's a lot my, of years, yes, actually. Yeah, 22 years. 22 now. years. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And that's, you know, if I hadn't, we would not probably not been sitting and talking now. Yeah, probably. We would not have all this amazing art yeah. that has blown yeah. many people's minds yeah. already. Yeah. That's great. So, so that's a little bit about my background. And then when I you know, decided in France to focus on my painting, yeah. that's what I've been done ever since and I have never looked back. So every artist goes through art stages, right, yeah. in their life. So um, let's walk our audience through yours. Mm. What did you start with? Um, what was the message behind the first paintings? And then up until now, like which stages have well, you gone as through? As I said, the first probably seven, 10 years were primarily uh, training for me, mm -hmm. practicing, 
mm -hmm. and trying to find my own, own voice. Practicing seven to ten years, guys. That's that's a commitment. Yeah. To I practice. mean, I'm still practicing. Of course, like because, you learn every you know, day. You know, probably, it's right? like an ongoing journey. Yeah. And um, that's what I like to be an artist because it's a journey, and you don't know really where it goes because you don't you don't see the end, right? That is very true. And the, the way I see it, the more you paint, the more you learn, and the more you can develop. You mm -hmm. know, but I think it's also very important not to to be able to move outside your comfort zone. Absolutely, yeah, to challenge yourself. Yes. And yeah. Because sometimes I find myself, oh, this is selling, and so all oh, right, let's do more <laughs> of that, right? Yeah. And just keep repeating something like that, and that that that's, could be dangerous, you know, because yeah, because you get stuck in a rut yeah, kind of thing. I yeah. think it's important that you try to move forward all the time and, and find mm -hmm. uh, find uh, what what is you also i mean the most important thing is to paint who you are yeah from inside to out mm -hmm. yeah that's very true yeah. to put your own spin yes. on things like as you were saying you were first you were um copying other artists a little bit but then yeah. you found your own yeah. uh, voice in that art right yeah. So, I mean, uh, also, I should note, you should know that I never exhibited on any of those works. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, no, it was just no. practice, right? Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. In this part of the interview, we're going to go more in detail about marketing your art. If you're a new artist, uh, Johan's going to share some tips for you, how you can get your art into certain places and how you put the price points. So stay tuned because that's something that you really want to learn. So Johan, what, how do you market your art? Because you're in a lot of galleries. Um, can you tell us, like, you're represented currently by... George Berger's gallery. In um, Soho, New Soho, York. New York. And um, you have been in tons of galleries in your life. Right? Yes, I have. And I, was I, reading your I, have biography. I still work with a few of them. And, uh, I'm represented in uh, Oslo, Norway. I'm in Spain. Mm -hmm. and a few other countries. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. So how were your steps to get in touch with the galleries or did they just um, come to you after they've seen a show? Or how was your, it's the, a com it's a com how did you build up your career? It's a combination. Okay, yeah. a combination. So some, sometimes they would go to the show and sometimes you would reach out to them. Yeah, and I, and right. I also have an agent that works with me worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've built up a very successful career. I was reading through your biography and um, it's been nothing but like names you've heard before and galleries that I know and all the stuff you want to... Yeah, no, I've been, I've been uh, very lucky in that respect. I mean, I've been showing together with Gerhard Richter, David Saleh, the Chapman brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Picasso, Salvador Dali, Irving Olaf and many others. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And what do you do now to market your art? Well, for me, it's been a little bit more difficult to market my art during the COVID. Yeah. Because, of course, you have the online presence and all that. But I still find that to meet people face to face mm -hmm. is a more powerful tool. Oh, absolutely, then you can actually have a conversation. Uh, so, a under non-COVID situation, <laughs> I'm out and about. All little, the time? Like, a lot. So, and what, not you necessarily, go to art shows? Yeah, I do some art shows, but I, mm. I, they are not always so good for marketing, you know. Okay. Most likely, most of the time, not. Okay. It's more try to get into some cool parties, some you know good dinner parties, mm -hmm. or you know. Where you meet some collectors. A combination of that. It could be collectors. It could be uh, anyone really, right? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a collector. Because it could be another person who happens to know someone who collects art, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, it could be a journalist. It could be a curator. You know, it could be another gallery owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I met you in, in one of those parties, right? That is true, at Norwood. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so I think that that is for me a very important tool to use. Yeah, which, I agree. It's which, all about but, networking. But it also, that also means that you have to be comfortable in your own skin and to be able to socialize with strangers. That is true, and especially for you, because you don't drink and you don't do any drugs or no. nothing. So 
you know, a lot of these parties obviously involve, you know, yeah. drinks, free, yeah. free drinks yeah, or something yeah. like that. So I find that very admirable that you still, you know, because I know some people and they don't drink, but they also really don't go out much because mm. they say, OK, why should I be in an environment where it's drinking yeah. and I have to like, talk to people? So I find that really great that you, for instance, you're like, I don't need to drink. Like I can just socialize. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really no, like but, but I mean, that's something that, that was a, one of my decisions when I decided to clean up my yeah. life was that I'm not going to stop living. Exactly. I like still want to be out. I still want to because I always loved to be around people and I love it still. I still love it. And my dog is a good marketing tool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Sleeping yeah. on one of the he, paintings he is, right actually. now. <laughs> so if I bring him. Yeah. To an art opening. Oh, because he's very cute. Yeah, I bring him to an art opening. Yeah. I always get people come, people come over and start to talk to me. Yeah, because people in New York love dogs. Yeah. They just, they're obsessed. Yeah, not only here, trust me. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, they're or, very popular animals. You know, or, I mean, I used to ride horses a lot in the past, not in America, but when I was in Europe. Yeah. That's another way, you know, to, you know, you meet people and mm -hmm. being that horses are usually quite expensive to to, to handle in stables and all that, so you yeah. need people that has enough money to buy a piece of art as well, right? Yeah. So it's it's all sort of connected. Because mm -hmm. I strongly believe in uh, the marking theory uh, that was um, a man, not man he, who came up with his name was uh, Kotler. Mm -hmm. Johan's going to discuss marketing techniques for new artists, artist with gallery relationships, and how to put the price point on your paintings so you're not underselling yourself. He spoke about something called the four P's, the letter P. Mm -hmm. Stands for product, mm -hmm. price, place, promotion. Mm -hmm. So if you can achieve all four, you will be a big winner. Mm -hmm. If you can achieve three out of these four you're still going to do pretty good yeah if you're going to do two you're going to you know maybe good maybe not if you only have one forget it yeah so price product has to work together right mm -hmm. correct yeah sure you don't want to overpay for something yeah you also don't want to overprice yeah. it right? and, but you don't want to underprice it as well yeah because you don't want the value to be not Cor seen yeah. as what so it the, is right? this has to be a balance uh, place is also for distribution. Mm -hmm. So as an artist, you have to have a good distribution channel. Yeah. And then... Good uh, network, yeah, right? And, but also place could be, for example, if you are a gallerist, obviously if you are in an area where you have a lot of people walking mm -hmm. with the right wallet, mm -hmm. is better than... Like for instance in Soho. Yeah, for example That's why Soho, Soho is yeah. such a good place for yeah, the that, art that is good, side. right? And um, the Lower East Side. Yeah. We have a lot of these like yes. very expensive shops. Yeah. And pre-pandemic, yeah. thousands of tourists to walking totally. in Soho. And then the, 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 the promotion, the, the, that part is usually the most difficult because it can be very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Depend on what kind of promotion you want to do. Absolutely. Uh, but if, if you have limited means, you have to be out and about. You have to find, uh, you know, a journalist that wants to write about you. Yeah. If you have unlimited resor resources with money, you know, you could do TV campaigns. Yeah. Uh, newspaper campaigns, name it right. But yeah. most artists cannot do that. Um, so, Johan, you have a, an amazing career that you've achieved and you're, you keep going and going every day, um, working in your amazing studio. Now, is there anything that you would advise or like any advice you would give a young artist that's just starting sort of, or even an older artist that's, but that's just starting to do art because art's universal, you could do it at any age. Mm. Um, is there any few pieces of advice that you have that you would really like to share with um, said artists? Uh, yeah, number one, paint who you are. Mm -hmm. Be true to yourself and find your own voice. Um, make sure that's you and stick to it. Mm -hmm. And then um, networking. Networking. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. 
very important now. Yeah. Always. Network. Always building network. your network. network. But on a genuine basis, though. Yes, of course. Right? On a yeah, genuine build basis. friendship. I mean, build exactly. friendship with other artists and people outside the art world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, especially when you start out, uh, the, the most people, most artists, they're, the first sales are usually to friends, mm -hmm. friends of friends, yeah. and to family. And in terms of um, pricing your art when you're starting out, mm. how do you know, um, how do you figure out how to find a price point for the art? Usually you do it together with the gallerist. Okay, or, or an agent if you have one. Yeah. Okay. Although if you don't, you have to figure out on your own and I mean, there's no rule. There's no that, rule, right? okay. We, I mean, yeah. I kind of overpriced my art from day one. All right. Yeah. Okay, and but it worked, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the reason uh, is not overpriced today, but from when I started, and the yeah. reason why I did that because a friend of mine who is uh, considered one of the best marketing guys in the world, a Swedish guy who has created some of the most famous advertising campaigns ever done so far, mm -hmm. like H&M, uh, the Swedish clothing brand. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember, they, they started out with these almost nude girls, mm -hmm. and it was big protest all over Europe. And they were like, oh, how can you show this? You know, mm -hmm. it was even banned in France, etc. Oh, really? Yeah, in yeah. France, it was banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, France it was, that has the craziest. I know. Craziest yeah, but it was too sexy films. at the time. What? Yeah, no, for being out would, on the road. I would the, not. You know, I would expect and, maybe like yeah, in. Yeah, and he also created the, the uh, when Diesel was an unknown brand. He Diesel. Did, yeah, he did their campaigns for the first ten years and took them from nothing to sky is the limit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so he told yeah. me that, Johan, don't underprice your art. Mm -hmm. Better to sell less, but for more money. It also be, it also makes it look a little bit more interesting for people. Can you actually explain the art business um, for people that might? <laughs> okay, <laughs> not the whole art business. Like, um, how does art collecting work? Why do people collect? Why your art, for instance? Um, can you elaborate on that? Well, to start with, as I said, to, when you, when you, if you're new to art collecting, the first rule, you buy something that you like. Right. If it becomes an investment as well, it's just a bonus. Mm -hmm. Most art that you buy will not be that. Okay. That's the brutal reality. That's no, I mean, I have a, quite a few collectors in my storage here. Yeah. I probably have at least 20 big paintings yeah. They're all sold, uh -huh. and they don't even ask me to ship it. They buy maybe a few paintings, one big or two big ones, and then a few small ones. They yeah. take home the small ones, and then they ask me now to store it. Yeah. And I'm like, I almost feel a little bit sad about it. Mm -hmm. Not not my bank account, but myself in my yeah. heart, because I think they should use the art for now. But they have pretty much bought it as pure investments. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. That's so yeah. they just store it and wait yeah. until it's yeah. worth more oh, and more. Maybe. Hopefully. <sighs> Hopefully. I'm no, I, I know sure. I know it will be. <laughs> you have to be in big collections. Yeah. Like famous collections with people who are known to be high end collectors. Yeah. You have probably to be in you know, in museum collections, preferably do some museum shows, mm -hmm. uh, etc. right? Yeah. And then you need help uh, in the beginning when you get launched in the auction houses. Yeah. You need people to, you know, put the price on at the right level. Right. Okay. Usually does not happen by coincidence. Okay. What do you mean it doesn't happen by coincidence? Because <laughs> <laughs> the art market is a pretty grey market. <laughs> oh, I see. So it's like a little bit of a setup sometimes, would you say? Well, for me, for example, I would hate to see my art in an auction house today. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I, I need a backup to make sure that the price goes where we want it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of like a gamble, but you also want to drive it into the right direction. Yeah, there is right? a pretty interesting documentary about Damien Hirst. Oh, yeah? A few years ago, how they 
Mm -hmm. how they managed to bring his prices to a certain level from day one. Do you think there's a lot of luck involved? It's a combination of luck and networking and have the right contacts. Yeah, okay. And to build a network of useful contacts that could move your career forward. Mm -hmm. And I Put think yourself it, in the right place. I think it's right? more that than just luck. Mm -hmm. And it's like probably... It's luck like is just a tiny... Yeah, so it's more strategic yes. planning. Yes, strategy. Strategy, planning, yeah. marketing. Yeah, which is my agent, for example, that's what she works with for me. Strategy, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you go there, then you go there. It's like playing chess yeah. to see moves way ahead. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting that you compare it to chess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you have to like think. Let's say five years yes. in advance. Okay, yeah. if I do this, it's like a chain reaction, right? Yeah. Or like a domino effect. And sometimes it just takes off, right? Yes. But then you also have to be ready. Once it takes off, mm -hmm. you have to be ready to provide. Yes, for sure. That's so interesting. I love that. So um, for the young artists that have never been uh, exhibitions in a gallery, how does the gallery artist relationship work financially and personally? What kind of agreements do you guys have? And how do you split? the costs and, you know, how do they promote the art, what's their... Well, the normal split is a 50-50 on okay. the sales. So you price your art and the gallery just takes 50% yeah. or they, the gallery over, like puts something on top? No, they're supposed to, it, it, we decide together on the price mm -hmm. and then the gallery takes 50 and I, and I get 50. Okay. And then usually we have agreed on what is a maximum discount they are allowed to give. Okay without asking the artist. Mm -hmm. And what's that usually? 10%, 20%? Yeah, it could be in that area. Okay. There's no rules here again, right? Okay. If, but then sometimes a gallerist might get an offer uh -huh. for a lower price and then uh, it's up to the artist to say yes or no, right? Yeah, of course. And that can depend on who is the buyer? Is it, was, is it good to be with that buyer? Because mm -hmm. will that buyer lead into more sales mm -hmm. to the same buyer or to his or her friends? Right. So again, strategy. Yeah, is strategy. Is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Very and cool. And then, uh, then you can have, a, you know, exclusive representation. Mm -hmm. And that that is probably a good thing to have uh, if you are guaranteed to have some solo shows in a gallery. Okay. Um, but before you have that, you might not want to be exclusive with a gallerist. Let's say you have the biggest gallery. If you're a new artist, would that be the goal? To like try to get into like one of the big name galleries? Or are small galleries maybe with like a great marketing strategy better for them? Would you say it's the same as in music? Or? I mean, no, not really. Case by case basis? It's case by case. Yeah, okay. Because, you know, you can, but if you take one of the big galleries, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Pace Gallery, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if they take an artist, when they take an artist, they usually succeed in what they're doing with. Mm -hmm. And so, that is because they have such a developed so, concept. Yeah, yeah. So it if, could work if, for anyone. If one of the mega galleries would approach an artist and they uh, they say we would like to work with you, mm -hmm. of course you should take it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so th I, I find that fantastic. And when it comes to networking, marketing your art, with the knowledge that you have today as such an established mm -hmm. artist with a long-standing career and many many shows, mm -hmm. gallery representations. Which, what advice would you give your younger self that you could just do it better from the beginning with on the marketing sides? Mm. Would I be? would have paid a lot more attention and focusing more on the networking aspect and especially to meet the right people. When you were younger already? Yeah. So that only came later on? Yes. So that was one of the that most... grow with my experience. Uh, with experience. Yeah. So already go like to more events, yeah. like build more relationships long yes. term yes. when you're younger. Yeah. <sighs> networking guys, networking, yeah. <laughs> right? No, that that is because uh, for me that's okay. I regret I was I was not better at it some years ago now. Yeah. 
I should have done that much better and much more. Yeah. No, well, I mean, you know, you can't force yourself if you don't no. feel comfortable, but I think it's it's a good strategy. I mean, for it sure. was not that I was uncomfortable to do it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't realize how important it was. Yeah. Okay. You, I, I, you know, it's you very easy to feel comfortable. You're hanging out with the same people that are your close friends. Yeah. And you know, you have a certain amount of time that you can actually mm -hmm. be out and about. Right. So in my case, I was usually focusing on hanging out with the same crowd all the mm -hmm. time. But you have to push yourself just to, to diversify. To check, yeah, to diversify mm -hmm. there. I always say that. You can yeah. learn something new from every person yeah. that you meet, right? So that, that's something I definitely would have been doing better. Yeah. To start over. I'm so thankful, Johan, for your interview because I feel like I, I just learned so much about the art business and about everything that made you the artist that you are today. So I really want to thank you so much for your time yeah, and welcome. for opening up your world to, to me and the audience. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm wishing you nothing but the best. Thank you. It was and nice having you in the studio. Your art. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>